and today we're going to go through um, another handful of drawing apps that are compatible with the Surface Pro X. Um, the Surface Pro X is exceeding my expectations on um, what, I, what it's compatible with by a large margin, so I'm really happy to see that there's so much more that it can do than I thought it could do. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, we cover a lot of information about digital art, different tools, uh, and if you have a touchscreen, a Windows 10 touchscreen device like a Surface, this is a great channel for you to subscribe to. We have a lot of useful information for you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the different programs that we have available. Uh, the first one I'm going to open up, and in the last video, we did Krita, Medibang, Paint Tool Sci, which you don't see the icon here for because this is version two beta does not have an icon, uh, Rebel 3, and um, I believe there was another program, but uh, those ones for sure. So let's start with uh, Clip Studio. Uh, Clip Studio uh, was very excited that there was uh, a version of Clip Studio available that worked with this. And I will have the links for these in the description. So we're going to choose Paint, and we're going to choose um, Use Trial Version with Limitations. choose EX and I would like to point out that at the moment uh, Tablet Pro does not work uh, on the Surface Pro X yet. All right, so let's adjust the screen here. All right, so when I initially did the test on this, I had this um, canvas was 10,000 by 10,000 and it was set to what I use to test lag and it was just too much and it was it was laggy it was very very laggy uh, but if you're using this and you're using it in this standard uh, format uh, not a massive canvas uh, you can see here uh, what it looks like uh, this canvas size is uh, 1240 by 1748 at 300 dpi let's choose a different brush That's very light. Let's choose something. And we'll choose an oil brush. And uh, let's pick some more colors here. And I think this is very fast. I think it's very responsive. I don't think you're gonna be able to do a large canvas on here. So let's quickly just show you what that large canvas looks like. So this is the same brush we were just using, the gouache. I'm not sure that's exactly how you say that. And let's increase the size of the brush. And that's not horrible. And that is horrible. Just so you have an, a feel for uh, what that, again, what that looks like. All right, so that's Clip Studio Paint. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so here's Sketchable. You see I've been doodling in this already. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of programs have a, at least a little bit of trouble with Canvas rotation, scaling, zooming, and sketchable does not. It's extremely fluid. Uh, zero problems with this program uh, whatsoever. And one thing that I like is that uh, sketchable allows you to use set touch to blender. So let's go ahead and we'll set this to Blend and draw. I think that's so cool. You can adjust the properties of this. So if you're drawing, uh, let's change this here. Um, by the way, you double tap here to, let's pick a different one. Okay, there we go. I 
I just like that. I think that's really nice. Very well done. Anyway, so that's uh, sketchable. Performs the way you would expect it to. Uh, very, very fast. Uh, no perceivable problems. Our, our next app on the list is Concepts. And Concepts also, uh, for the most part, works the way you'd expect it. Um, I was not able to get this to do one of the new features, which is um, Nudge, which is really cool. It's, a, it's like a, this is all vector. And so Nudge allows you to push the lines and adjust them. Uh, that does not seem to work yet, but works wonderfully on other versions of the software. So you see, there's a little bit of lag with this brush. I'm not sure if most people draw at that speed, but uh, at that speed, you're going to see some problems. Um, there we go. Let's put these on different layers. All right, so that is Concepts. If you haven't tried Concepts, it's in the Windows Store. It's got this beautiful palette uh, or color picker. I think I just picked the exact same color. <laughs> that's, that's very amusing to me. Oh, and I did it again. Let's pick a different one. Oh my goodness, did I do it again? I did it. <laughs> I'm actually trying to pick a different color. All right, there you go. The next one is Autodesk Sketchbook, and I had to uh, really look to find this one. I have the link in the description. So the video driver may not be installed correctly. Canvas rotation is not supported. Exclamation point. That's very serious. All right, bug fixes and uh, new updates available. Um, I don't know if this update... Uh, let's try it. I, I'm assuming the update will be a 64-bit version, but maybe there's an update to the 32-bit version. All right, so the program did prompt me to update. So we updated. We're going to see how this new one works. It brought me here, but I don't, I don't know where this file is located exactly. Um, all right, we're going to have to run it through here. Yes, we remember. And we're going to skip login. And let's look at the version number here. All right, version 8.5.1. Um, it's from 2017. Sure. All right, so when I tested this on the other version, it worked also very smoothly. Really am a fan of the color blending in Sketchbook. Actually, there's a lot of things about Sketchbook I like. Um, I have not been able to find a good graphic design uh, vector-based tool. Affinity Designer and Illustrator do not work. So if anyone has any suggestions, please put those in the comments. All right, so you guys can see how this runs. Uh, I think it runs very nice. Um, I'm unaware of any limitations uh, at this point, uh, except for canvas rotation, right? I think that's what they told us. Uh, you can use, uh, where's their rotation tool? No. This is it. Okay. Okay, so you can rotate the image this way. Ooh. The image and pan, but as far as the canvas itself, I'm not sure. 
All right. Okay, so that is Sketchbook. This is a 2017 version from all I can tell. It's 32-bit, but it works nicely on the machine. All right, the last one on the list is Photoshop. And this is Photoshop. Uh, it says there's a problem with the enhanced. It appears to be defective. Please rerun your monitor cal calibration software. Um, we're going to ignore profile. As possible, actually, that that's causing some of the touch problems that I was getting before. Um, so let's go ahead and actually restart. It's going to use anyway. And we're going to load uh, a large canvas. requires a minimum 512 megabyte of VRAM for 3D features and some filters. Um, this is detected less than that. And I think this is not that there's not 512 megabytes of VRAM, which there may not be, um, but more, why does that look so yellow? Oh, right, the uh, enhanced color profile, I believe. Okay, all right, so um, yeah, same problem, so it has nothing to do with that issue. All right, so this is with one of the custom brushes. And here, zoomed in, you can see it actually runs very nice and smooth. Uh, this brush is from Kyle's collection. And uh, let's turn on opacity and pressure. Let's pick a different brush. Oops. This is a mixer brush. And this one's actually very, um, this is laggy on the Surface Pro 7. All right, and um, let's pick, I think that's the same one. I tend to pick the same things over and over again, as you've noticed. Let's go back to general brushes and more round, and let's put this up to roughly 50 pixels. Right, can't zoom. Panning works okay though. Oops. So there is no scrubby zoom um, because uh, the graphics processor is not recognized. And so uh, you're not gonna get that until it is recognized. Now, as far as pressure and the lines, uh, really is not bad unless you put your palm on the screen and then there's some problems with the way pressure is read on the Surface Pro 7 and the Surface Pro. X. Both of them have the same problem. Uh, let's zoom here so you can see. It's got this um, kind of, it's a stepping problem with the pressure. It does not exist when the palm is not on the screen. When it is on the screen, uh, I'll demonstrate this real quickly. And this is not just Photoshop, it's actually just in uh, Windows itself. Turn on advanced. You can see here, pressure curve up and down. Looks normal. This is basically what a normal pressure curve looks like. If I put my hand on the screen, oops. If I put my hand on the screen, actually I can probably just put my thumb on the screen and you can see it. So it'd be this equivalent of having my um, palm on the screen. You can see here, uh, let's adjust the brightness. that has got the stepping going on. So it is not a smooth ramp. Anyway, that causes some problems with the lines. Non-existent when your palm is not on the screen.
You may or may not be able to see the difference, but but I see it. Okay, so that's Photoshop. Um, by the way, the pen does attach over here. The pen does attach over here very nicely. But when the power cable is attached, you actually attaches to the front of the screen as opposed to the side. And the power button is right here, which means when you're attaching another stylus, if I take um, the Raphael 5, which is my favorite stylus, over here, it overlaps or can very easily overlap if you're not careful the power button. And that ends up um, pushing the power button often. So you get a warning saying, release the power button. Uh, it is, there we go. You can see it is a very good magnetic connection, by the way. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. If there's another program that I have not tested that you want to see, uh, Adobe Fresco should be compatible with this sometime soon. Uh, it is currently not compatible. So when it does come out, um, or I actually should say it has not launched yet for the Surface Pro X. When it does, uh, I love the program. I think it's fantastic. It's very, very nice, very fast. And I assume that uh, it'll run equally fast on here as it did on my Surface Pro 6 i5, which was uh, flawlessly. I had no, no problems with that at all. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found anything useful, please subscribe and uh, put your comments and questions down below, and I will try my best to answer those. All right, thank you. Until next time, stay creative.